For those of you who don't know, Wuthering Waves is a new open world RPG that came out as of the time of this recording 36 hours ago? Yeah. Now, in my time playing the game, I've had an absolute blast from the combat to the traversal um, escapes of the game and even taking pictures of cute animals. Like, look at this dog right here. Isn't he just fucking adorable? Now, after playing this game for such a long time, I can definitely say that it is going to become one of my new favorite games to play whenever, wherever. Like, this game is absolutely fucking amazing. And obviously, by the title of this video, you clicked on because you wanted to hear my opinion on the game. So while you're here, I would like to say just real quickly, I'm trying to hit 10,000 subs by the end of the year. So if you want to, subscribe to the channel, show your boy some of that support if you want to see more Wuthering Waves content. So now, let's get on with my honest review of Wuthering Waves after playing this game nonstop for the last 36 hours or so. Now, the gameplay for Wuthering Waves is absolutely gorgeous. Like, just being able to move around as I feel like with a grappling hook, being able to actually grapple different objects or things to just move around towns and, and whatnot is, like, absolutely amazing. The parkour is also, it feels amazing. Being able to just run up walls feels amazing. I don't need to worry about my stamina bar going out, climbing walls, and <laughs> tension. Um, like, it, it really is something new. It's something fresh. And that's just the movement aspect of the game, of how you travel across the world. Travel is really fun in this game. It's not bland. It's not boring. Like, it feels fun to travel. Like, I don't want to do fast travel. I want to roam around the world. I want to grapple this that and the third jump speed dash run up walls etc i want to do all that and it feels fun doing all that like i can have endless amounts of fun just running around doing nothing and just completely disregarding the main story combat wise i don't think i <laughs> i don't think i need to say much combat wise this is the best combat you will get in any gacha game period there is not a single Gacha game as of right now that can compete with the combat that Wuthering Waves has, aside from PGR. And even then, PGR is arguably still worse, and PGR still has good combat anyways. So, like, they, they literally took, like, PGR and just made it better, and then slapped it into an open world. Like, it's actually amazing. Like, this is single-handedly the best combat that we can ever have in a gacha game like i don't i don't see any gacha game being able to outdo what wuthering waves is doing with the combat system like it, it's actually amazing love love it so far i don't get tired of fighting i had to drink a gatorade by the way there sorry <laughs> yeah I don't get tired fighting enemies, I just want to fight enemies. I was doing random side quests and there were literally mobs everywhere and I was just here fighting literally anything that breathes because I wanted to A, um, fight enemies because I really like the animations and I just like seeing cool shit and then B, I wanted to fill up my Pokédex. Oh my god, transition space? No fucking way. Yeah, uh, the Pokédex, <laughs> aka, um your data bank i really like this mechanic of the data bank because it makes it way easier to prioritize your resources on other things because the way you farm for those of you that don't know the way on um, that quote unquote relics or um oh uh, what, what do they call it in genshin what, what what do they call it in genshin because i i forgot what they call it in genshin unless it is relics and then i'm forgetting what hsr calls them regardless 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 point being however you farm relics in this game right it's not through going to your um you know your calyrex your domain and then spending 40 resin 40 trailblazer power on like then so to swarm up some couple bosses no the way you get your relics in this game is by hunting down pokemon aka the mobs that you face in the world like the actual like the monsters that you fight in this world that is how you farm relics. Now, every uh, um, 
every single one of these quote unquote relics their official name is echoes so i'm just going to refer to them as echoes from here on out so the way you farm echoes you go up to monsters you kill them and they have a percentage chance of drop now the more you collect the higher you increase your percentage chance of them dropping as well as the rarity of echoes that can be dropped so like for if you're like data bank one you can't get any um five star drops from uh, any like five star echoes however when you hit like data bank level 15 you can get five star drops and you have increased chances of getting said five star drops that's pretty much how those work and obviously each echo differs in rarity you have your five star you have your four star you have your three stars etc like the you know pretty pretty standard shit from how it goes and for me i love this because now i don't need to worry about using my energy to have to farm something that i need to build my character instead now i can prioritize getting the mats that i need to level them up or getting the money to level to actually be able to afford to level them up or even being able to just get the um resources to level up their weapons which is really fucking nice i i like not being able i, I like being able to just run around the world and i get rewarded for killing shit like it's rewarding me for killing things and at that, I can prioritize which set, like which kinds of things I want to farm based on what mobs spawn at what times, etc., etc. Talking about mobs, character models. Character models in this game look really fucking good. Like, astoundingly good. Now, I do think they can be a bit better, but I also think that a lot of the models and designs start to grow on you as you play the game more genuinely i think that and i think my prime example of this is um by she where i and sorry if i like horribly butchered that fucking name by the way but i didn't really like her character design that much i thought her design was kind of basic not gonna lie like i thought i thought her design was kind of basic and then as i started playing her more as i started seeing her in game and looking at her ultimate with her r and whatnot you know it's cool like like her design i like it more and more now like i made a design tier list which uh you know just gonna boom that right onto the screen and she was like put in like b tier on design for me at the time when i made it before the game released and now it's like oh i would easily put her like an a tier with how like she looks like in game like it it looks amazing like she looks amazing in game and it's one of those designs that really grow on you as you just start playing the game more and more which again really like like i i think that's great and there's a certain charm i would say as of now though i think um i do i want to say honkai has the better okay i feel as if though Hon uh because comparing because you know i'm comparing this thing to genshin and honkai and what would not because obviously those are the only two games that are its competitors but more so genshin um if we're comparing this to genshin um i will say that i think genshin kind of takes it in woman models and that's a maybe it depends it, it really depends on the kind of model because if we're talking about like the base character models then it's like yeah, no, Wuthering Waves clears, like, uh, undoubtedly, and my main thing for this is that the K Genshin uh, characters kind of suffer at times, some of them at least suffer from this thing I like to call um, same face syndrome, where it kind of just looks like you just took the face of one character, changed the eye color and the eyebrows a little bit, and then slapped it onto a character model, and then boom. There's, it doesn't feel like I'm looking at different characters, it just looks like I'm looking at a reskin of like the same exact character except like this one has a fatter ass than the other or something so it's like it's like genshin like they all do look the same at some point some of them don't some of them don't but some of them a good majority of them do and i don't really like that i like how this one there's actual diversity in character models if characters faces are more round they're typically more soft when they're like sharper they're more on the edge that when they're like in between it's like they're undefined like you know like little things like that even when it comes to their eyes and their cheeks etc like it does matter and it looks good and it makes the characters each feel unique in their own way and i like that a lot the music in this game is beautiful 
it's actually beautiful is it better than hsr yes and no same thing with genshin if it's better than genshin 100 percent, i'm not gonna lie music in this game goes to is it, this game's music is better than genshin in all aspects in my opinion from playing genshin and playing this like i i just would rather listen to the wuthering wave soundtrack all day however it's in a tough spot which hsr because hsr has really fucking good boss music like when i tell you like the boss and themes are so good cacolia sunday um the echo of wars that we have with um like vance helia or the swarm like they are so amazingly well composed it's chef's fucking kiss however wuthering waves i feel has better ambiance when it comes over to um the music compared to the ambiance for a lot of the casual worlds when it comes to hsr like um take like something like jin Zhao lofu or um bellabog or jaro v um jaro vi jaro six comparing it to just like the main town you enter when you're going to city hall in the beginning of the game or just randomly exploring the world like i, I i'll play them I'll, I'll put i'll put like a comparison on screen <laughs> But yeah, for me, the Wuthering Waves ambiance, like the way the music feels, the way like it feels nice. Like when you're just running through the town at nighttime after just like exploring and randomly traversing and you can just stand around, look at the beautiful scenery of the city and just listen to that music as you hear like waves of people having their own unique conversations and there's just wind blowing, you know, it, it just feels real. It feels like you are in there in that moment and it's beautiful. It really lets you take in like the beauty that Kuro Games created. Like it, it genuinely is a surreal sometimes. Like I can literally just sit down, drop on my PC and then sometimes if I want to just be on my phone, I'll just leave my character there and I'll just listen to the music and that's it because it's calming, it feels nice. Like it, it's amazing. Like it really is like cool to do and feel like as if i'm actually in the world that they created now i have uh, been glazing wuthering waves to say the least because as, as of right now if we're gonna put this on a rating right now i put gameplay at 10 graphics at 10 the world at a 10 character models at a 8 that's my alarm <laughs> character models at an 8 uh music at a 10 but you know with every bit of pros there are some cons and i think one of the many cons of this game is um the story i think as of right now the story is very slow and it is kind of the weakest element of wuthering waves up until you get to a certain point with a certain character that like appears out of nowhere when you're like exploring and finding something if you know what point in the game you obviously know what point in the game i'm talking about but in the very beginning of the story it doesn't really feel like there's any weight to what you're doing it kind of is just like info dumping a lot of times now granted this is a one point this is like the 1.0 and in every 1.0 there it's like that it was like that in hsr it was like that in genshin 
So, you know, it, it the, that is benefit of the doubt type of thing. But with how long it takes, it just sometimes feels insufferable. Especially with how long the characters take to speak sometimes. It just really creates this boring atmosphere because you kind of are like, you're left in a state of like, oh, I really want to explore. But you're also put in like this dreadful state of, oh my god, when will she shut the fuck up? It's like, and it's really contradictory emotions when you're playing the game in the beginning. Like, there's like maybe one sequence in the game or two sequences in the game where it's like, holy shit, like this is fire. Like, um, the surprise boss fight at the end of the tutorial. And then like the first, um um echo that you fight when you're like first learning the mechanics of the game and whatnot after you get found by yang yang and chisha but other than that it's like between in between those two fights there's like those two fight like the boss fight takes like around five minutes then that little um, mini echo fight that it, when you're with chisha and yang yang takes maybe like three minutes so out of a um you know, out, out of a, um, I want to say, like, an hour-long introduction phase to the game, 50 of those minutes are spent just text, 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 decision, text, 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 decision, flashback, text, 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 decision, and I think it's a really big turnoff, especially for people who are already hesitant to play the game. Because they're going to see all the reviews and, like, they're going to see all the cool shit that you're going to do. But when they see how fucking long it takes for you to even get to the gosh or are you just to explore, like, I genuinely think it'll be a turnoff. For me, it wasn't because I've been, I was hyped for the game since, like, December. Like, I was really hyped. Like, I, I've been waiting for this game for a while, if not longer than December. But it's, it, so it's like, I feel like they could make the tutorial fit just a smidge shorter. Like, uh, assuming you're actually reading the text, then like, okay, it'll take long. If you're not reading the text and you're just spamming F, like, maybe it'll take you like 30 minutes. But then you do that and you kind of ruin the immersion for yourself. So you have to pick between ruining the immersion to get the tutorial over with or suffering through an hour, hour and 10 minutes of speaking you know if, you know with like maybe like eight minutes of gameplay like of actual like interactive like combat gameplay that like teaches you the mechanics of the game and whatnot so i think the story like up until that certain point that i reached where if you know you know with a certain red-haired character who has a scar you know you would you would think you you know that up until then the story is pretty bland like when we get introduced to like John Shin, it, I was like spamming the F key of like, I just want to get this done. Like, I don't care about these people like at all. Like, I, I honestly could care less. Like, please, I'm trying to just get this shit over with so I can move on and like get to like the good shit of the story. Like, it, it's really sad, but like it does pick up. But because of how weak the story is in the beginning, like I and like how dreadfully long it is to even reach that point. I have to give the story like a, like maybe a 7 out of 10, like 6 out of 10 even. Like it, it's just really dreadfully long and it's like I didn't pull the 5 star I wanted from my free from my 40 pulls and I did not want to reroll because it would just take too long and I don't have the patience. <laughs> like I really don't have the fucking patience for that shit, dude. So I was like fuck it, I'll dug it out and deal with it and call it there. Optimization, um, so optimization is both good and bad in this game. The optimization for PC is really fucking good. Yesterday, there was non-stop hotfixes because the devs were seeing, Girl Games was seeing, we gotta fix our fucking game. Like, our game is glitching the absolute fuck out right now. So, we need to, um, we gotta get our shit together. And I can respect that. However... That's only on PC. The optimization, the optimization on mobile is god awful. I tried to log into my account on mobile, miserable. It was actually fucking horrible. I 
could not like it, it wasn't smooth like there was constant game there was constant frame crashes there were frame rate drops like at one point like the fucking screen just started glitching back and forth just da -da 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 -da, like it was bad the mobile optimization really needs a lot of work compared to its pc counterpart and the pc counterpart does still have some bugs but it's, it hasn't even been 48 hours so like they're working on it and they're doing a good job they're at least addressing the issue and they're still doing it however that doesn't change the fact that the mobile optimization even from release to its standard it was worse than what it should be like bare minimum so it, it could be better it could have been better even on release i feel like the mobile optimization could have been at somewhat better somewhat adequate to run because like on my phone i can run hsr just fine granted hsr is turn-based this is a whole new open world rpg with better models better combat and everything so obviously it's going to take more you know power to run at like full capacity but still i feel like optimization wise on mobile could have at least been done better than what came out On to the final aspect, so moving on to a more positive note, the Gasha. The Gasha system in this game is really good. And, you know, for a Gasha game, for the Gasha aspect, you know, the main way you're, the company's gonna be making money, if for that to be good, that is a really good sign. Why is that a good sign? Well, let me, uh, it's a good sign because a uh, good Gasha equal more money, because more people are gonna want to gamble their life away, like me. Uh, water so good let me let me break down the gasha for you guys so there are there are three parts to the gasha so there is the choice banner there is the limited time banner then there's the weapon banner now uh well this is more with the limit the standard weapon banner your standard banner and then you have your choice banner and then you have the two limited banners right so your choice banner after your 40 after you do your four uh, your 40 pulls for your 50 characters because it's discounted it's eight per multi instead of 10 you get to select a character that is guaranteed after at earliest 80 pulls which by the way the pity in this game is 80 not 90 which is really nice the only con to that is that the pity being 80 is only as good as how many free-to-play pulls they give us and how grindable shit is and i can tell you it is pretty fucking grindable it is pretty free-to-play friendly for how it is for, for especially for the beginning of the game so you do not need to worry about the pulls not being enough about the pity being 80 because they're giving us less pulls no it is fine the way it is it is good it is grindable it is it is nice it is a good feel so now aside from the casuals so you have your limited banner and you have your weapon banner now your limited banner works the same as every other limited banner you have your you have your characters you have your five stars you have your chance at winning your 50 50s 50 percent chance you get the character 50 percent chance you don't coin flip if you lose you lose after you lose that 50 50 you're guaranteed the next featured character that comes on the banner so if you lost your 50 50 on Jian, but that means you are guaranteed your 50 50 on um like jin jin yin, i forgot her name jinyin yinlin yinyin yinlin i'm stupid you are guaranteed your next you are guaranteed to pull yinlin when she comes out if you lost the 50 50 on Jian. That is how it works. Now, the weapon banner. The weapon banner, one, has its own separate currency. So it's an it's its own thing. You can pull for weapon, like weapon, everything has its own separate currency in this game, which is again really good. Now, with the weapon banner, you are guaranteed the five-star weapon, the featured five-star weapon on the featured banner. I if I'm not reading this right. You get to pick whichever weapon is there and then that is the weapon you get to follow through up until 80. they're making it so the weapon banner is not fucking worthless because the weapon banner you know the thing that makes the character the character if you had to go for a 50 50 or it wasn't guaranteed you would lose your fucking mind you you would absolutely lose your fucking mind do you want to let's take a trip down memory lane of why this is so good 
for those of for people who weren't playing Genshin at the time, do you remember the so you remember Staff of Homa when Hu Tao came out? Because I was playing during that time. When Staff of Homa dropped, there was a uh, infamous content creator by the name of um Tech Tone, you know, infamous bald man. And um he summoned for Staff of Homa, like most people did. But he went on, um, I want to say, was it six or seven weapon banner five stars back to back to back to back to back to back to back without pulling Homa? It was all like Wolf's Gravestones or like Skyward Spines. It, it was, it, it was it, all unfeatured. So them making it that you are guaranteed the weapon at minimum 80 pulls. We're avoiding, you know, losing all of our life savings on a gacha game. Which, again, really fucking good, Curl. Really fucking good. That is, that is really, that is really nice. Then, for the standard 5-star, you actually get to pick whichever weapon you want to go follow on. And then, like the limited 5-star, you are able to just select whichever one you want. And then after that, you confirm it. I already confirmed mine, which is just a halberd, which is just Emerald of Genesis. And then at 80 pulls, you're guaranteed it if you didn't hit Soft Pity already. And Soft Pity is from the range of like 64 to 69, if I'm not mistaken. Someone can probably correct me in the comment section below if they know. Or I'll just edit it in once I uh, get confirmation of what the actual Soft Pity is. So yeah, the Gasha in this game is really good. Something also that this game does really well is that if we go to the store over here and we go to item exchange For five star characters that you own you save up enough of these corals You can buy dupes of the five star and this is not just limited to general pool This is going over towards the limited five star characters as well so that means in the future you can still you can save up these rainbow corals and then after that you pull whatever character you want you have these things saved up you can immediately at minimum get r2 you can minimum get r2 the resonance levels by the way are like um eidolons for um for characters pretty much you can minimum get these characters r2 that is so good not even funny that, that is really good. Like, I have 27 of these. I would already have... And that's if you save, by the way. You see, I have 27 of these right now. I, you, I, I should, right now, I should have, like, 50. 50 to 60 of these. So, like, and that's free to play. It's only been 36 hours. Like, 36, 37 hours. And I, and I have, like, around a fourth of what I need. So, if I wanted, if I pulled Jian, for example. Like, for, for Jian Shin... If I wanted to, I would already be a fourth of the way. I should have been already like a fourth or a third of the way to getting dupes for her. Like, it's a really good system because it doesn't expire. You can always save it. And whenever there's a character that you really want, you can then just summon for that character and you don't need to go for dupes. You just get one copy and then you spend all your time getting the weapon and then you can get like at minimum a, a free copy of them. And it's not just one, it's two. Like, getting a character to R2 practically for free? I don't know about you guys, but that's pretty fucking good. Like, that's pretty fucking good. Like, like that that's some madman shit. Like, I ain't ever seen Nogasha do that shit. Like, not like this. Like, it, it's amazing. Like, now, if you were playing Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, you know, the hit anime, um, Puzzle Gasha, Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle has actually done this already, where you can just buy dupes with other, or do, with Dokkan Festival exclusive coins, aka rep coins, where you can just buy characters after summoning, so, you know, they took a page from, a uh, Dokkan Battle and said, yeah, we'll implement it in our game, because it's a good system, and they know, Gasha in this game for me, it's a 10 out of 10, I don't have any issues with the Gasha. I, I really don't like it it's it feels nice like I get rewarded for my time I really do I get rewarded for investing my time into this game it's it's amazing like I can't see like how people wouldn't find this amazing like it, it's so like it's a good gasha and if you think otherwise you're delusional like I'm sorry if you think otherwise you are delusional as fuck 
like you just want to hate the game because it's better than your precious Genshin Impact. Mm. Either that or you hate it because you don't like open world. And to each their own. Can't tell you anything on that. If you don't like it because it's open world, shit, whatever. Some people don't like HSR just because it's turn-based and it's absolutely fucking dumb. Because HSR is a fucking perfect game. It's not a perfect game in the sense of like it's actually perfect. Perfect game as in like it's a perfectly fine game to play. Poor choice of words there, Zeus. Poor choice of words. No. <sighs> But, regardless, um, I believe that is everything. Um, overall, Wuthering Ways, what did I rate it? I rated a 10, a 10, a 10, a 9, a 6, a, t uh, a 9, and then a 10. So, um, if we do um, quick maths right here uh, on my trusty dusty calculator with how I rated everything. 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 yeah uh-huh come on kill him kill him kill him so that's 50 that's um then 56 and then um 65 65 divided by um trusty dusty right here hold on hold on don't kill him chat 65 divided by 7 that is a um a 9 out of 10 game like mathematically speaking how i rated it <laughs> it is a 9 out of 10 game and yeah that that's pretty accurate for me a 9 out of 10 game like it's a it's a really good game it has its shortcomings but um wait no is it out of 80 it is out of 80 oh i'm an idiot oh wow um i can't do math now wow i'm dumb as fuck because i forgot optimization is one mm. So that's like what then i rated optimization like a what like um a 7 out of 10 so that's 72 divided by 80 apologies okay that's still a nine never mind i'm not st i'm not dumb I'm, a, I'm i'm intelligent i am intelligent uh anyways um yeah nine out of ten game pretty pretty much how i felt about the game when i was playing it it's a really fucking good game like if you haven't downloaded already please download the game PC though, because again, optimization on mobile is kind of eh. But for PC right now, the game feels amazing. It's so fun to play. I can't get tired of it. Like, please download this game. Um, I should mention, by the way, I'll include the disclaimer like at the beginning of the video, but uh, this video obviously isn't sponsored by Curl Games. You know, I just felt like making a review on a game that I really fucking like. <laughs> so, yeah. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, again, try to uh, we're trying to hit 10k subs by the end of the year. Um, so I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day, everyone. I'm Zeus, and I'm out.